Hey collectors and friends, welcome back to the channel. Uh, my name is Dan and this is Old Sarge Collects. And uh, this is episode 12 of the Diamond Star set. And so if you have missed out on the previous uh, episodes, I encourage you to please go back and take a look at those. Diamond Star set is a great set. Um, I love the art deco design of each card. And so uh, yeah, go, go back and check out the other videos. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about, um, let's do a recap of who we talked about last episode. So we started off with Rick Farrell, and then we went to Buck Jordan. Um, then we talked about uh, John Whitehead, and we finished up with George Stainback. And um, I believe out of those four, George Stainback was my favorite card. Um, so we've got a great lineup for you today, and uh, one really huge Hall of Famer and a, a player that I really, really respect. And so, but let's go ahead and jump in with the first player. This is card number 53. Um, again, George Stainback was card number 52 and we're going in numerical order. So card number 53 is of uh, Oscar Melillo. And let me give you a little bit of information about Oscar here. So um, Oscar was born in 1899 in Chicago, and in 1926 he made his Major League debut as a second baseman for the St. Louis Browns. He played 12 seasons in the majors, of which he played for just two teams, the St. Louis Browns and the Boston Red Sox. He managed the Browns for one season after he retired, and uh, Oscar Melillo died in 1963 at the age of 64. Now this card is from 1935. And it's a greenback. And, um, you know, with each card, they have fielding tips and batting tips. And on this card, um, it's, the tip is telling youngsters to run the bases on the inside, touching each base with the right foot. Basically to make them uh, faster runners rounding the bases. So, All right, so that was the first card. Now the second card uh, is the, the big time Hall of Famer that I'm going to cover. And um, I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this player. So just so you can get a, a good idea who this player you know was and, and what I like to focus on on each player. So uh, that player is Hank Greenberg. Uh, this is a, a PSC3. All right, so let's talk about Hank Greenberg here. Uh, so Hank Greenberg, a.k.a. the Hammer and Hank, Hankus Pankus and the Hebrew Hammer. He was born in 1911 uh, in Manhattan. He made his Major League debut in 1930 as a, four, a first baseman for the Detroit Tigers. Hank only played one game in 1930, but it made him the youngest player to appear in the Major Leagues that year. He rejoined the Tigers um, as a full-time player in 1933, and uh, Hank was a five-time All-Star. He was a um, two-time World Series champ, a two-time MVP, and a four-time AL batting, I'm sorry, AL RBI leader. Um, he was also a four-time American League home run leader, and in 1938, uh, Hank Greenberg narrowly missed breaking Babe Ruth's single-season home run record when he hit 50, uh, 58. There was one game where he hit a 59th homer, uh, but the game was a rainout, and it's also speculated that he was uh, walked more, up to 20% more, in the last half of the 38 season, preventing him from beating Ruth's record. Uh, so being the class act that Greenberg was, he dismissed that speculation. So, All right, let's talk about his military service. So, uh, you know, I think this speaks volumes about his character. So let's, let's talk about his military service. Uh, so Hank Greenberg was the first American League player to register for the World War II draft. In 1941, he was inducted into the U.S. Army and served as an anti-tank gunner. He uh, promoted through the rank to sergeant. After the bombing of Pearl Harbor, he volunteered to serve in the Army Air Corps, being the first major league player to do so. He then graduated from uh, OCS, that's Officer Candidate School, and was commissioned as a second, I'm sorry, a first lieutenant. He served in the China Burma India Theater of Operations for six months before being um, reassigned as a special service officer. He, uh, he was promoted to the rank of captain and served until 1945. Uh, he spent 40 months total, I'm sorry, 47 months total in military service, being the longest of any major league player. In 1947, I'm sorry, 1945, after his service, he went back to the Tigers. All right, now going back to him as a player. Uh, first, I want to I say uh, thank you, Hank Greenberg, for your service. 
And uh, now back to him as a player. In 1947, Greenberg was traded to the Pirates over a salary dispute with the Tigers. To persuade him not to retire, the uh, the Pirates made him the first baseball player to make a hundred thousand uh, salary in a season. Due to the anti uh, anti Semitism he faced because of him being Jewish, Greenberg was one of the uh, few opposing players to publicly welcome Jackie Robinson to the majors. And uh, he retired after the 1947 season, playing a total of 10 seasons in the major majors. He missed almost four years due to military service. It's speculated that um, had he not had it not been for his service in World War II, Greenberg would uh, would likely be in the 500 home run club. However, he finished his career with 331 home runs, a, a batting average of 313, and uh, 1,276 RBIs. He was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1956, being the first player of Jewish descent elected. Hank Greenberg went on to being uh, a GM and partial owner of the Cleveland Indians until the mid-1960s. He died in 1995 at the age of 87. All right, so that's uh, Hank Greenberg. Now, this card in particular is from 1935, and it's a greenback. And the fielding tip on the back of it is... Um, is while with a runner on first, the first baseman should stand just in front of the bag until the ball is pitched. So that way, um, if the pitcher throws the ball over to first base, you're close by, you can tag the player out. So um, now on the uh, on the flip side, on the front side of this card, um, what I really like about this card is the pinstripes and the Detroit uh, logo on his jersey. And then I like the flags in the background. You see two green flags and you see a, a red flag over his, over his shoulder. So that's what I like about this card. Uh, so this is probably one of the key cards in the set. And again, I'm still missing quite a few of the other key cards, uh, but I, I love this card. So, all right, the next player is, um, his name is Tony Cuccinello. Um, I'm not really sure if I said that right. I, I tried to say it right, but anyway, Tony Cuccinello. He was born in 1907 in Long Island. He made his Major League debut in 1930 as a second baseman for the Cincinnati Reds. In his 15-season career, Cuccinello was a 280 hitter with 94 homers and 80, uh, I'm sorry, 884 RBIs. He played uh, for six teams, starting with the Reds, then the Dodgers, which you see him on this card, the Boston Bees, the New York Giants, the Boston Braves, the Chicago White Sox. Uh, Tony was a three-time All-Star and was a coach for the Tigers when they won the World Series in 1968. He died in 1995 at the age of 87. Uh, and so the back of this card is a green back, also from 1935. And uh, the fielding tip talks about second baseman anticipating a bunt. And by watching the batsman's body movement, then rushing the ball to make a quick throw to first. So that's the tip on the back. And on the front, you know what I really like about this card is that he's in a Letterman jacket. You don't see that a lot. And um, so I really like that about this card. He's, you know, the jacket that he's wearing. I also like the players in the background. So, um, so that's card number 55, Tony Cuccinello. And then the last card is Gus Sir. Uh, now this is in a GMA5. I'm not a very big fan of, of this uh, slab, so I'm probably going to have this re-slabbed at some point. But anyway, let's talk about Gus, Gus Sir. He was born um, in 1906 in San Francisco. In 1929, while playing with the San Francisco Seals, he became the, he became the only player in baseball history to be sued by a fan injured after being struck by a foul ball he hit. The case was later dismissed. He made his major league debut in 1930, uh, the next, the following year, um, as a first baseman for the Pirates. He played nine seasons with the Pirates and was an all-star in 1936. He played two seasons with the Phillies before retiring uh, at the end of the 1940 season. Gus Sir died in 2004 at the age of 98. And um, the back of this card is, is also a 1935 card with a green back. And the fielding tip, tip, the fielding tip talks about uh, the first baseman setting himself up for the double play. 
And so, now what I really enjoy about this card is it's like one of those in-action um, cards. You know, he's on uh, first base and somebody's, you know, got the got the hit and they're running to the first base and he's uh, going, you know, catching the ball, uh, catching them out. So anyway, that's what I really love about this is that, that in-action. All right, well, that's everything that I have for you today. Those are the cards. I hope you enjoyed those. Um, let's go ahead and show that Hank Greenberg again. There we go. So those are the cards that I have for you today. Uh, do me a favor and uh, write a comment in the comments box on on which card of these four that did you like the best. Um, just the card, not the player. Tell me what card was your favorite. So anyway, that's all I have for you today. I appreciate you stopping by, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks.